Welcome to Joe Sports Channel. You can follow me on Joe the Fighting Jay on Instagram. You can follow me on Taker Devil and hashtag Joe Sports Channel. Ladies and gentlemen, it is June 27, 2020, and I hope everybody is having a fantastic day today. I have my fellow UK mate next to me, Ronald. How you doing, Ronald? I'm okay, Joe. It's good to be with you. It's been a while. It has been a while, Joe. How are no, things, my friend? I'm better for seeing you. It's been a good old good old journey with you, man, working at Farm Board. How you been? Yeah. How is quarantine going for you, COVID-19, and work going? Well, we're all good at this end. Um, none of us have had the virus, so we're, you know, we're just sorry for the ones that have. Absolutely. Ron, tell me about yourself. About myself, Joe, I'm 64 years old. I come from um, a county in England called Yorkshire, the biggest county in England. It's normally called God's Country. Um, I come from a city, Kingston-upon-Hull, in the East Riding. Um, it's called that way because um, years ago, it was the only city in England what stopped the king from getting in when he was at war um and it's i would say it's a totally different life in the uk to what it is here joe and how 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 so how so um it's a lot more like living in toronto okay you know yeah. It's lots and lots of people crammed into small spaces. I don't forget the UK is only a little island, 852 miles long by 351 wide. So it's not even as big as Ontario. How far are you from London? Uh, roughly 250 miles from the capital. It's not too bad. Upwards towards Scotland. <laughs> okay, so you're you're towards that way. Okay, I always wanted to visit the United Kingdom. I always did. I think it's beautiful. A lot of good history there. Uh, oh, definitely. Good food do. down there, you know, good food. A lot of Greece, I guess. You know, yeah, there's, there's a lot, a lot of history in the UK, Joe. That's why a lot of people go there. I mean, and, and don't forget, at the end of the day, we actually ruled three quarters of this world at one time. Now, in the United Kingdom, I know they love their football. Yes. But I want to switch gears quickly. What is your favorite sport? My favorite sport? Rugby league. Rugby league. Yeah. I haven't had anybody come on my show in the last seven and a half years talked about rugby league. But you well, are the one that are going to change that. Yes. There is a difference, Joe. There are two kinds of rugby. There is rugby league and rugby union. Now. You will have heard more of Rugby Union over here, which we consider to be um, a public boy, a public boy school game. The north of England, um, even though it has Rugby Union in it, is primarily the uh, Super League. It's called Rugby League, and it's a it, it's a similar sport but different. There is no padding, Joe. Not like in most of the sports over here. There is no padding. You're up to the elements of somebody else's fists. So, you know, like it used no to be in hockey no, at the, no, no. the old days. It's even worse than hockey. No pads, no nothing, you know? Yeah, but they don't have as much fighting, Joe, in hockey anymore, do they? Well, you told me so many times we, were st we used to work together that you missed – Fighting and hockey. You don't watch hockey because of fighting. And you know what? I love watching the Bruins and Red Wings, but you don't see those two fighting anymore. It's like very soft these days, you know, really, really soft. And I don't know what it is, if it's the new era, if it's what, you know? And I guess it's the, the new moderation, new era, whatever you want to say. Well, I think it's more to do with health and safety of the players, Joe. The um, hierarchy of each um, association, whatever it may be. Even in football, it's the same now. 
you know. Nobody used to bother about a big leather ball what was wet through when they've been playing with it and heading it and getting head injuries. Now it's totally different. And rugby league is the same. Concussion, Joe. Concussion to kill it. You know what I mean? It's a tough sport. And I had a cousin who used to play rugby league, and his name is Omar Halbuni. And believe me, um, he used to come home with always bruised. He was always Always, Joe. Always. You know, something was wrong with that kid. Something was <laughs> it's out of the game, Joe. You know? Out of the game. It's a tough game, but it's a real sport, and it's a contact sport. That's a exactly. contact. It know? is contact, Joe. And not the thing like, is, not like baseball. Finish. All rugby players at the end, no matter what happens in the eighty minutes in the rugby game, you might have a fight with somebody in that rugby game. At the end of it, you're all mates. It's not carried on after the game. Or very rarely, should I say, it's not carried on after the game. Once the game's over, that's it. You all become friends. The sport. When it is a sport, Joe. When did you get into rugby league? When you were younger? Like oh, yeah. I've always been into um, rugby league, Joe. Um, as I've always been into football. Um, but... When I was a young lad, I used to go in my summer holidays mm -hmm. to pick the stones out of the ground after the tractor had been around to put the new seeding down, pick all the little stones out of my team, whole KR, out of there, take all the little stones so that when the pitch was done properly, players wouldn't hurt themselves on any little stones or cut themselves. I used to do that in my summer holidays. Not just me. Quite a few of us used to go, and we were only little kids. And was it was it cheap? Like how many pounds was it back then, compared to now, the price? It used to be um, the programs. What you get used to be threepence, and then they went up to sixpence. Old money, not new money. Sixpence, which is about I don't know, two and a half pence in new money, metric money. Um, a lot of people um, used to sneak into the grounds then because they didn't have security like they do today to try and get your money. You know, and the sooner that you were a pass holder, so they don't have to get money off you every week when you go. Now you you, you can pay anywhere from five pound to being a, a really bad end to twenty two pound for a normal seat. And how are the crowds? Um, well, the let's say the top six or seven Super League teams will be averaging from 8,000 to 12, 13,000, maybe more sometimes. Depends on the game, Joe. Like, I come from a city where there are two teams Hull FC on one side of the river and Hull KR on the other side of the river. Now, our ground, OKR's ground, can only hold 13,000. That's all we can get in it. We can't get any more in. That's not bad. That's not bad for rugby league. That's not bad at all. But Hull FC play on a football ground. And they can get 20-odd thousand in theirs. And usually, when we play at their place, there's roughly between fifteen and 20,000 people there in the, from the same city supporting two teams. <laughs> So it's like the Yankees and Mets, you know? Yes, pretty <laughs> similar. Exactly. And have the Yankees and Mets ever met in the World Series? Have the Mets and Yankees met in the World Series? As far as I know, I don't think so. Well, we met in the Challenge Cup final in 1980. Hull versus Hull KR. We won 10-5. There was 92,000 people there, Joe. At Wembley, 250 miles away. Okay. So That's a lot of people, Joe. Now, is that normal for rugby league? No, that's what you'd call. For those two teams, is that normal to sell out? 5,000, Joe, no. no. 20,000 would be normal. Look, we got a comment from the Grickster. Ronnie is the man. And you already got supported. Right? You 
fucks, you know? <laughs> yeah. It's rugby league grounds are small. Um, it's just starting to take off over here now. You've got Toronto Wolfpack. They're in the Super League now. They've played three years in the low divisions and went the way up. They're in the Super League by merit, even though they've got better players than all the other teams that they've had to play against, Joe. And they're coming up against players that are a bit better than their players now. And they're finding it a bit hard at the moment. But that's how everybody starts off. There's a team to come from Ottawa and a team to come from New York next season. So the game is global because it's played in Australia, New Zealand, most countries in Europe, not to the same extent as it is in Australia and the UK, though. I was wrong. Mets versus Yankees 2000 World Series. It was called the Subway Series. Okay. There you go, Joe. I'm not 100% sure if they did or not. You know, Thank you for correcting me on that, Noel. I should know better than that. Now, when you score in the rug rugby league, yeah, is it one point, two points, three points, or what? It used to be three points, Joe, for a try. Okay, it's now four, and two points for a conversion, and three points for a penalty, and one point for a drop goal. So you got to keep. Oh, you won't see yeah. over here because you don't have drop goals in, you know, you don't have them. You have all kicks in the NFL. It's a kick from a tee. There's no such thing as a drop goal, is there? No, not in rugby ball. No. But there is in rugby league where you drop the ball and as it's going down, you kick it, goes over the sticks, get a point. You know what? I'm really interested in playing that game. But I don't know if I'm tough enough to play that game. Maybe yeah. me and you can play. Me and you don't you. have to be tough enough, Joe. Joe, you just have to be good enough, not tough enough. Because if you're not tough enough, one of your teammates will be tough enough. Don't worry about that. And it's <laughs> all about team, looking after each other. I want to go to a game. I want to go. And I want to go with you. If I ever go to UK, I want well, you to go with me. Next season, Joe, next season, if... Let's. Uh, we've got to get this season out of the way first because of the coronavirus. If Toronto's still in the in the pre Premiership, well, in the Super League, and my team's still in the Super League, if there's no relegation, that means they'll both be in there. When my team plays at Toronto, we'll go watch them, Joe. As for rug rugby, I'm a New Zealand All Black Black fan. Yeah, well, that's Rugby Union, Joe. That's a different game. That's rugby union. And are the rules totally different? Not totally different, but the game's totally different. You'll see a lot more kicking in that game. When the ball goes to ground, you've got to let go of it. In rugby league, you've got to keep hold of it. <laughs> you haven't got to let nobody get that ball off yet. You know what I mean? But then in rugby league, everybody don't pile in there trying to get that ball. They're not allowed to. And you get six tackles with the ball. You get six tackles to go from one end to the other and score. I've if seen you, it. I've seen you have to that six tackles, Joe, and you haven't got a penalty. You have to give the ball to the other side. I've, see, I've seen it on TV, and it's pretty aggressive. <laughs> it's, it's a tough sport. Some teams are absolutely brilliant at it, Joe. Who's the best team in rugby league? If you could call it, who's the best team? <laughs> I remember I asked you the same question at Wendy's interview. <laughs> no, so uh, you didn't expect me to say somebody else, did you, Joe? Oh, um, who is the best team? Is it your team, really? No, my team are not. Well, they are to me, Joe. Um, probably, if you had to edge your bets, you'd probably say that at this moment, St. Helens, which is in Lancashire, were the best team because they are a class team. You can't take that away from them. They are a class team team they're good at what they do every one of them's good they're fast you know it's just you have years where you go up and you go down joe you know every sport's the same nfl teams are the same baseball basketball teams are the same up and down up and down one year you're rubbish then you get a couple of good players and the next year you get a bit better and so on and so on and it's the same in rugby league once you've got a team, what's good, 
you can have that team for six or seven years and you can be good for six or seven years. Absolutely. Absolutely. I want to switch gears quickly. I want to get into football. Football. Not American football. Yeah. Football. The real game they call it football. The real game of football, not soccer. As you football, know. England. <laughs> Zach. Yep. When is England ever going to get a World Cup? One one. But they need more than one. Yeah, you're right, Joe. We don't need more than one, and that's why. Four to eight years, they play so good, but when games on the line, they just drop. And I don't yeah, know what no. it is. And they got a great team, great system. But I just don't know what it is about England that they well, always. I think, Joe, that within the next two World Cups, that England may win one of them, because in in the latter years we've had decent teams with um, too much experience, shall we say, in them. Now, they've got a decent team with young kids in it. They're young. And a couple of experienced players. I and they're know. hungry, Joe. They're hungry to win. You when know? do you think England will have a championship? Um, well, what I'm hoping, Joe, is that England win the World Cup in 2026 when it's held in canada are, we, are you gonna go oh, of course if, go. England, if england's in canada let's go hey i'm in for... america and mexico it's in three countries it just depends where you get drawn i'm hoping that england get drawn to play in canada somewhere that, that, that would be lit hey come on italy against England, you can't get a better match than that. And I love Buffon. He retired, you know. I love yeah. Buffon. I think he's one of the best goalkeepers in the league. Uh, a lot of respect for him. But I respect the goalkeeper as well. He's a great guy. A lot of yeah. respect for the great goalkeeper, you know. He was a great goalkeeper, Joe. He was a great goalkeeper. He's just gone back to Italy. Um, you have to say, Joe, that I don't think – that the goalkeepers of today, including Buffon, are as good as the keepers of yesteryear. And what? How, why do you say that? Because uh, I know it's because, because, and I'll give you my opinion. Well, maybe because in the olden days, goalkeepers had to be good. It was simple as that. Today, a goalkeeper can have a good defence in front of them, and he doesn't need to be that fantastic. The only difference between today and yesteryear. Is that the game's a lot faster now? Absolutely. It's a lot faster. Now, I agree with you. Back then, I think they played a lot more with heart. They were well, tougher, they were stronger, and they want they were hungry for that yeah. cup. In today's day, it's all about this. They're greedy for this. Money. And football players are very selfish. They will do anything for a penalty. Anything for a penalty. They will fall on the ground, whine, cry, like their leg like broke, like. Their mother died or something, you know, if you want to go to their extreme, right? I agree with you, Joe. It's called and cheating. I don't, understand. I don't understand why football, they do that. And everybody else copies them. Hockey, baseball, basketball, any sport. They all copy so um, football, you know? Well, the thing is, Joe, if one of those players falls down in the penalty area, gets a penalty, and they score from it and win the game, they've done their job as far as they're concerned. You know? A lot of players do that, Joe. I have to agree with you, um, especially South American players. Even though they're classy and they're good, they will still roll about on that floor like Neymar does as if he's been poleaxed with a, a two-foot badge pulled across his head or something. And nobody's touched him just to get that penalty, Joe. You know? Because goals win games. Sure. Goals do win games, but, you know, defense wins championship if you want to go to that as well. Now, you guys got rid of Wayne Rooney, okay? Yeah. I was so disappointed in England getting rid of Rooney because I loved Rooney. He was so athletic. He was so fast for his age. Why did you get rid of Rooney? What was the reason behind that? Was there something Was there something that they couldn't come together as agreement? Was it money? Or what was it? He's getting older, Joe. Yeah, is that what it was? Yeah, that's all it ever is. It's, people get older and slower. And when you're in the Premiership, 
You can't afford to be carrying anybody, no matter what team you are, whether you're Manchester United, Liverpool, whoever you are. Arsenal, Chelsea, doesn't matter who you are. Chelsea's a good team. Well, not Marco <laughs> Patricio. <laughs> we, hey, we have had, we have argued over the years, my friend, over yep. Chelsea. You know, I mean, you know I'm a United fan, I, and I think the world of United. I think the great team always have been and always will be in my eyes. But a lot of teams nowadays have got the money power to buy the best players in the world, to keep them in their side. You know, so it's like buying a championship. Really, I'm not saying United haven't done it, but United have won it with a lot of kids out of their own academy as well. So, you know, there is a difference. It's a good sport. It's a good it sport. is. It's international, you know. Everybody knows worldwide, it. Worldwide, Joe. Worldwide. You know, the, the whole country knows. The whole, the, whole, the whole economy, everybody knows about, you know, football. But I want to switch gears to another thing. Let's talk about the National Football League, the Green Bay Packers. I wanted to ask you this question so many times. But I want to ask on my show, Jordan Love, are you happy the Green Bay Packers picked up a young quarterback? I would say at this moment, yes. Because we'll need him for the future. Not right now, because I consider um, Rodgers to be the second best quarterback in the league. Don't tell me, Patrick Mahomes, you, you call him the... the you best know that, Joe, don't you? You like, know that. If the guy hasn't even been there for five years and you call him the best. You know that, Joe. He is absolutely awesome. I wish he played for Green Bay. I do. <laughs> he is a good quarterback. He's absolutely an awesome player. I mean, don't forget, American football and Canadian football are alien games to me, really. We only started getting them in, in the UK in the 70s. When um, Joe Theismann and John Riggins played for um, the Redskins and won the title, and then Theismann broke his leg, and there was never the same again, and they've been going downhill ever since. But the Green Bay Packers are my team. I stick with them all the time. I mean, I'm disappointed that we haven't got further than we have done because we play some great games. And we play some rubbish ones. We do. We play. We we play rubbish against the crappy teams. Have you noticed that? Yes. You know we always struggle with the Giants. Always something goes wrong with the Giants. It's like the and blue. That doesn't matter how the Giants are playing, does it? Whether they're playing rubbish or not is immaterial. But um, don't get me wrong. All in all, I love to watch American football. No matter who's playing, Green Bay are my team. The only team I cannot stand, well, could not stand, should I say, was the Patriots. And it's not, I can't stand them because they're brilliant, which they are. You can't take that away from them. I just don't like Brady. He's the best quarterback in the league. Yes. No, not anymore, Joe. He's still here. Hey, he has six rings, multiple MVPs. You got to go. You got to give the guy credit, man. You got to go, Joe, for that. But you have to realise at the same time as him being a fantastic quarterback, he's had a decent team to play in. Well, he's in, he's in Tampa Bay now. He's in Florida. So let's see what he can do in Tampa Bay this year. Now, where do the Green Bay Packers end up this season? Winning the division, wild card, missing the postseason, or what, Ronald? This year... Yes, I would expect them to be at least in the same mode as they were last year. And can we improve on our offense beating the 49ers? Because we couldn't stop the running game. That's how we lost against the That's how we lost. Joe, you're right. Rodgers was better than Jimmy G. He was better than him. He was more consistent, but it was the running game. The San Francisco 49ers killed us. They raped us, if you want to say. The thing with the Green Bay is um, – we, we tend to sit back and let teams get in front of us, Joe. They run a running game against us and they get in front. And then we're fighting uphill all the time. Instead of us going straight for the jugular and Rogers putting them passes in like we know he can. But you need the receivers to get them passes, Joe. 
And I still think that we're two receivers short. We are two receivers short. We really are. You know, my own personal opinion, two receivers short. I mean, really good receivers, Joe, not run of the mill receivers, good ones. No respect for the 49ers defense, Joe. Who are you scared this year? Who's the most scary team you see? Do you see the 49ers going back to the Super Bowl? Do you see the Chiefs going back to the Super Bowl? Do you see Tom Brady doing something that no quarterback has ever done, you know, after six Super Bowls? Or what team do you see kind of exploding? Well, as good as Tom Brady is, I can't see the Tampa Bay Buccaneers going to the Super Bowl. I, I will honestly say that now, Joe. I agree. I agree. I cannot see them going to the Super Bowl. I can see the Chiefs going back because Mahomes is just coming into it. He's just getting into it now. It's great. You see how he throws the ball? Like, it's, it's unbelievable. Like, you know? And with a couple more absolutely spot on receivers, they'll kill anybody in the path. But I also like the Saints. And the problem is, they're in the same half of the draw, aren't they? Like, we're in the same half of the draw as Chicago and San Francisco. So, when one of them has a really good season, we've got to be playing good every season because we know we're going to play one of them sooner or later. Are we having an NFL season with fans this year? That's the Pardon? Point. Are we having an NFL season with fans this year? I don't think we will, Joe. I think all games will be behind closed doors with no fans. So you're telling me Super Bowl, no fans. Is that what you're telling me? I think so, Joe. My own personal opinion. Because Why do you say that? You don't you don't see the coronavirus slowing down in the United States of America? Exactly. Or is that you don't see that slowing down anytime soon? No, it's getting worse, Joe. It's getting worse. Forty five thousand cases today. Forty-five thousand. Have you seen their death toll? One hundred and twenty-five thousand people have died in the United States. Uh, we, we as Canadians, uh, we kind of took a step forward before the Americans did, you know, and we played a smarter role. But then again, when you have ten times more people, you're going to get. In terms of what it is, you know? Yeah, I understand that, Joe. And not, not every single person died from the coronavirus. You can't no. say everything. The statistics are not great. You know, I have a friend. His cousin died from cancer, stage four cancer. He had no symptoms. He had no symptoms of coronavirus. He died from cancer. They put that as coronavirus. So who knows? I, I, I probably say that, that happens all over the world, Joe. In every country around the world, that's been happening. Where people who haven't died of the coronavirus, but have died of something else, have been put on the death certificate, coronavirus. You know, it makes it look worse than it is. Me personally, my own personal opinion, it's here for good. And we have to live with it like we do with the flu. We have to live with it. Are we ever going to have a new normal? Mate. No, I don't think so. We're in the new normal. Masks. We're in the new normal, Joe. That is the new normal. Kills at shops and masks. I, I can't see it being anything else. Because people are not going to take the chance anymore. Or shouldn't be taking that chance. The problem with Americans is they've got that much freedom to do what they want. They take that chance. They wanted to open their economy up as quick as they could. I want the borders to go to Wisconsin for my Packers October 5th. I want to go watch my Green Bay Packers dominate against Matt Ryan and the Atlanta Falcons. I want to go, right? <laughs> I want the borders to open. I have so many things I want to go see, people down there that I know, people that I love and all that, you know? And I understand, I that. I understand that. But no? while they're getting as many cases as they are, I can't see that the Canadian government – can afford to open those borders. Yeah, but how can they afford with the stock and the economy and all this, trades and all this? We're dying out as Canadians, as Amer everybody, you know? But we're still alive, Joe. I know we're still alive, but we're losing a lot. We're, we're losing 
you're losing a lot, but it's only money, Joe. It's only money. You can't take it with you when you're dead. I absolutely right. Money, money is just here for right now. But I'm just talking about for people with small businesses. The small business, they're hurting so much. The big businesses are fine. You know, when you have a franchise like Chuck Roadhouse or Farm Boy, no, you guys are fine. But when you have small businesses, those are the businesses that hurt. I know that, Joe, and I can believe it. That's the way it is because a lot of small businesses will not have opened again. They will have gone to the wall. The bigger businesses, they'll borrow off the governments if they can. They'll do anything they can just to keep going. But at the end of the day, Joe, we've got to be safe. Symptoms in the UK. They're doing well now. Yeah. They're doing well, great. Because I heard the other day there was no cases at all. Is that true? That's been, well, no, there was not no cases, Joe. There is still some cases over there, just not as many as there was. Because they had lockdown, Joe. They locked it down. Like most countries in Europe, locked it down so people couldn't go out. Everything, they shut everything down. We didn't do that. You know, we still no. have things open. We start people going out, you know. But we have to say that in um, the full length of Canada, I think it was yesterday, there was only 207 cases. And where? In the full states of Canada, there was 207 cases. That's not bad. 111 of those were in Ontario. Well, we're here. But for Jim. Ontario, that's absolutely fantastic. Because only two days ago, there was 200 odd. <laughs> I don't know. I, I really can't thank enough uh, Premier Doug Ford. I think he's doing a terrific job. Uh, he was pretty upset uh, about a month ago. That in Toronto, they were having a party. There was thousands of people. Anyone in there says, if people gather every single day like that, it's going to be like California wildfires. It's going to go crazy, you know? And I understand, but people want to get out. But people are going out all at the same time. And when you go out all the same time, believe me, somebody's going to catch it. Like yesterday, I went with my friend Jamal Althamani down to Chuck's Roadhouse. I didn't wear a mask. I refused to wear one. But there were so many people that I was, I was worried I'm going to get it. You never know what people because people don't care anymore. People have no patience. People are crazy. People are nuts, right? So yeah. we're just, people, you know, are hugging each other, kissing each other. It just looks like a normal. But I was still worried. I was still concerned about my well-being, my grandparents, my loved ones. You know what I mean? I got home yesterday. I kind of was tired, you know, and I kind of felt that, you know, I'm nervous. Did I get COVID-19? I want to check myself. Fever. Do I have to go to the hospital? You know what I mean? So I'm cautious at all times. I still wash my hands, hand sanitizer. Always, and I know, uh, Farm Boy, I can't thank you guys enough, the employees and staff members for helping, you know, customer service. You guys deserve a lot, and you guys deserve uh, a big wage coming up, seriously. Well, I have my hands in sanitizer all day long, Joe. All day long when I'm at work, my hands are in sanitizer. You know, and I get so many compliments of people. Oh, you keep this clean, you keep that clean, you do this, you do that, you're nice people, you, you talk to them nice. And yet, the other day, a lady came in the shop and said to me, oh, what's happening there? Keep talking, I'm just I'm pulling up the NBA schedule. All right. A, a lady in the shop came to me and said, um, don't the people have to wear a shop? Don't they have to wear masks in this shop? I said, no, not, we can't force shoppers to wear masks. We can only force the staff to wear masks and we do we wear masks all the time whether there's shoppers in there or not that makes sense if they have an option not to wear masks but you guys have to does that make sense well to the company it does it doesn't to me because if i have to wear one everybody should have to wear one and i know the big like the hospital ones or the ones kind of cover your yeah. own come just on your nose and just to, just to your chin. And you're a custodian, right? I'm a custodian, yes. That's the hardest job. That's the, you're, you're you're picking up garbage. You're you're bending down. You're you're sweating all day. You know you feel yucky. You know, and you just want to get home, take a shower, and wearing a mask all day, man. That's that's tough. You know, you got the you're a savage, man. You're a savage, mate. <laughs> <laughs> and a lot of people can't understand you, Joe, when you're talking through a mask. No, you you can't. I the same. Same. People, you know, but. What what is the other option, Joe? You know what I mean? What is the other option? 
I mean, look at the home and get the two thousand dollars that Prime Minister Justin Trudeau would rather work. I like to work for my money myself. I... Well, I always recommend you always. But um... I'm gonna switch gears. The National Basketball Association is back for good. I want to yeah. pull it up very quickly. I know we don't have much time, Ron. I know you got to get to bed, but I want to show everybody this. Thursday, July 30th, we have our matchups. Basketball is back for good. We got the Utah Jazz and the New Orleans Pelicans, the LA Clippers, and Los Angeles Lakers. We have so many good teams out there. Ron, what season are we going to witness with this coronavirus with basketball? Is it going to be weird with the championship? Who's winning it? Playoffs are going to be different, regular season. What do you have to say to that? I, I think personally, Joe, it will be a totally different game. I mean, you're used to a lot of games, whether it be baseball or basketball, whatever, you're used to a lot of games. You and they're not playing that. in their, in their arena. That they're not playing in their arena. No. And they're going to play, what are they playing at? Three, four different venues? Yes. Because look, Los Angeles, there's a lot of cases there. You got New Orleans, you got Brooklyn, you got Memphis, Portland, you got Phoenix, Washington, you got Boston, Milwaukee, Sacramento, San Antonio, you know, Houston, Dallas, Miami, Denver. That's Saturday, August 1st. Utah, uh, Oklahoma City. Like, then you got the Lakers and Raptors, you know. And I'm just saying to myself, why can't they all play in their arena and have no fans? That'd be cool. That would be really cool. But then again, you got to say at the same time, they're traveling. You know, you never know who has it. You know, they're coming from different countries. Different players are coming over. They're not sure. They got to test them all. Costs more money. You know, there's so many things out there that people give this excuse. But I would rather see Toronto playing at Scotiabank Arena. I would see the Lakers playing in their home arena. The Clippers playing in their home arena. That's how I would like to see as fans, you know. But whatever uh, – Whatever comes, comes. You know what I mean? Basketball is back. Sports is back. You know, we, we need some entertaining, you know. And it's going to be different because a lot of players are not going to play. Like a guy like uh, Kevin Durnett. And you look at, like, LeBron James. He says he doesn't want to play without fans, you know. And I just don't know how the season's going to play out the postseason, you know. Well, I, I personally think it'll be the basketball will be a bit similar to the Champions League of football in Europe, where instead of playing a best of seven series or five series or whatever it is they want to play, they'll just play one straight knockout game. The top eight will play in one place. They'll all play it that week to the final in the same place. Who do you see winning the championship? I'd like to think that Toronto could do it again. My own personal opinion, I think they're just as good a team now as they were last year. They play, but, as, a, they play as a team. Yeah. I just, I, I don't know what it is, Joe, but I just don't think it's there from this year, no matter what they do. We didn't, you know what? Kawhi Leonard was a big factor. But believe me, we could we could have won that championship without him. I'm telling you. Wait, because the way they were playing, Joe, the way they were playing, they could have done. They could have beaten anybody. Well, stop here for a sec. If LeBron James goes down, the whole team goes down. If Kawhi hey, got, hey. Rid of, got rid of him, the best player, the Raptors are still second in the division, you know, with 40 plus wins. So you're telling me it was it was a whole team, you know, it was a it was everybody, you know. It, it wasn't like a like somebody would hog the puck like Phil Kessel. No, no, no. It wasn't like no. that. They all came together. They all played as a team, you know? They did, Joe. Like England. Play as a team until they fall apart, you know? <laughs> Joe. Did you watch the, the postseason last year between the Raptors, the, the championship game? Yep. And I watched a few Raptors games last year. You went to what? I watched quite a few Raptors games last year. You did? I did too. I'm not really fond of basketball. It was exciting, Joe. Exciting. 
Oh, the fans, the fan base, and all that outside the Scotiabank Arena. That's what we want, don't we? At sport, we want to be excited. You know, basketball is is back, right? But I know you're not a big baseball fan, but baseball is back too. Major League Baseball is back, and um, they usually play 162 games. You know, that's a lot of games. They're cut. That's more than half now. They're playing 60 games. You know, what do you say to that? Why hey. Why do they play 160 games, Joe? Say that again? Why do they play 160 games? 162 games because that's part of the system. It's been there for years. You know what I mean? And, and, and why do they play that many games? It's a tough game. Believe me, it is. I've played it, and you got to be ready for the ball, you know, especially pitchers. I love watching pitchers. I love watching the Blue Jays. The Yankees, the Red Sox, there's so many great opportunities. I know you're not a big baseball fan yourself, but if you ever had the opportunity to play it or just watch very closely, there's a lot of skill there, you know, and it's more just in the game. Yeah, we used to play at school, Joe. You guys? Yeah, they call it rounders. That's what they used to call it in England, rounders. Four poles when you got to run right round when you've hit the ball. But, um... I can't see, no matter what, that any team should have to play that amount of games for a championship. <laughs> and it's more than 62 games. You, you got you to go into the division. You got to go to the wild card. Okay, first. Win that. Uh, best out of five. Okay, and then best out of seven. And then you go to the championship game. That's like oh, that's over like 180 games, maybe even more. It's a lot of games. Why, why, Joe? Why are they playing five games per bit? Why? Why? Yeah, the Yankees, play? Jays, and Yankees, they play four, like I said, like Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. I don't like that. It should be two, maybe. But four? I think they should change that rule up. Well, why don't they just play one team away and one team at home? That would make sense. Here you go. You got Ronald as the, the general manager of Major League Baseball. <laughs> you know? No, I'm, I'm being serious. Why don't we. Don't they don't switch it up, you know? You know I mean, let's face facts. All all leagues in the world, the world over, it's only like in basketball and only like in baseball and ice hockey. Why you play five and seven games against a team on the run? Why? Why not just play two? One at home and one away. Part of the Why system. do you need to play five games? Because they have that many games, that's why. When you got, why do you need to play that many games? That's what I'm saying. Why do they need to play that many games? It's a good question. Rugby league, how many games do they play? Twenty-eight at the most. Twenty-eight the most. And how many? How many during the postseason, the championship? You know, what do you? In the what? In the postseason of the championship game, how many? Is it best of the five, or is it just go home? It's like. It's like postseason NFL. No, we don't have a postseason, Joe. So it's just 28 games and... You play 28 games, and in that 28 games, you will have, I don't know, maybe five games to get to the final of a cup competition. So there's 33 games you'll play. If you get to the grand final, that'll be another three games. That'll be 36 games you will play over a season. And you'll win it all. <laughs> you know what? The, I kind of like that idea. Home and the same team away. You I have home advantage and they have home advantage. I kind of like that idea. I just don't see the point in playing a team five times. Four times, three times there and two times at yours. Or three times at yours. Well, two and two. Two and two. You know, two in New York, two in Toronto. Exactly. Why not? You know? You can put all like, them games out. It's like hockey, like the Leafs and Bruins. Boston had two, the Leafs had three, and Boston had the remaining. You know, that, that that's nice, right? That'd be nice to have. But if you really want to go into it's like somebody saying you're changing the Bible, okay? Yeah, I understand that, Jerry. You're, 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 you're changing the book. You know, that's not right. The book was set there, and it's you're not supposed to change it at all, you know? Because people... Look at it as that, in that way. I've heard people over the years say that. I even had a broadcaster one time from Ben Thomas, Ontario, Canada. Even it's like changing the Bible, 
you know. But don't you think, Joe, that playing that amount of games leads to more burnout of players? For sure. And more injuries? And more injuries. And yes. Always out. You know what I mean? It's a hell of a long season, Joe, that 160 games. It is. It's a long, long game you're playing, even if it's on the table tennis. And they're tired of the end. You got no energy. Like, like, it's exhausting. It really yeah. is. And they're always on the road, you know. Them and the WWE wrestlers, World Wrestling Entertainers, they're yeah. on the road a lot, you know. Yeah, I understand that, Joe. You know what, mate? Seriously, I have a lot of respect for you. I love you like my own brother. And you are you are terrific for the show. You know, you really are. You're, you're very. Well, I hope it goes down well for you, Joe. That's all yeah. I can say. I, my, you know, my you know what my dreams are. You know, I come on here every weekend and talk to my great fans. And you have been a fan for a very long time. And I really can't thank you enough for coming on here. And I hope we can get together sometime. Go back to Wendy's, have some, you know, potatoes, and you know, sit down with everybody and um, just have a good time. You know, we, I want to. You know what? We need to come together. And like I say every weekend, don't ever feel alone. Don't ever feel sad because we're all in this together. And uh, believe me, things are going to go back to its normal, but it has to take some time. Um, patience, my friend. You know, a lot of people don't have patience. If you have patience for this, believe me, you'll have no cases. Eventually, it will slide away. But it's the people of Ontario. It's the people of this country and beautiful land that need to listen to our governors and to our doctors. And a lot of people do not have respect for our doctors. I can't thank the work, the, the doctors enough for what they have done. Okay. My mother works in the paramedic field. I can't thank her enough, you know, and it's great to have people like that, that check up on one another. I go to my grandparents almost every couple of days just to check up on them. You know, I am not going to sit home and be afraid of that. I am not afraid of getting the coronavirus. The only person I'm afraid of is the mighty God up there. That's all I'm afraid of. You know, there's always a reason for everything in life, and we will come together at some point. You can't sit in house and rot, Joe. Or other else, the virus wins, doesn't it? Yeah. Like I said, we sit in house and do nothing, the virus wins. The coronavirus beat the National Hockey League. The coronavirus beat the National Basketball Association. The coronavirus beat everything. But we are stronger mentally and physically. If we can all come together, have a big group, okay, and say, "Hey, let's try, let's try to have a some, let's let's have let's figure out something and let's just try to go towards the normal way again," you know. But we're too afraid. We're just too afraid, you know. We don't listen, you know. <laughs> we want the opposite. We're always the opposite, you know. That's the enemy. The enemy is defeating us. But we can defeat that if we listen. But this is what the new world's about today, you know. Well, I hope some of your listeners and, and watchers, Joe, have learned a bit about rugby league. They have. They have. Great question. They have. And we'll look at it in a new light because it's getting to be a global game and it's coming over this side of the world, whether you like it or not. It's going to be over here. I appreciate it. I really do. Do you have anything else to say? Any any fans out there before Ron goes? I know Ron has to get to bed soon. You know, we went actually overtime, you know, 20 minutes overtime. <laughs> <laughs> I hope the more they don't give you crap at work. What do you do? Oh, it's on Booney's show. Oh, it's okay. That's okay. You know, <laughs> one boy employees and workers that I say hello to them. And I want to give a big shout out to the one and only Corinne. Great person. A lot of respect. And, uh, yeah, guys, have any questions before Ronald before he leaves? We need you more often. <laughs> I bored him all to death. <laughs> What'd you say, brother? Uh, yeah. What'd you say? Sorry, I didn't hear what I you said. I bored him all to death. He's <laughs> <laughs> the rugby league, you know. Once I get into it, John, to see what it's like, they'll love it. If they like contact sports, You'll love it. I will. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. Not a problem, Joe. Anytime. Anytime. I'll catch you later. Catch you later, Joe. Thank you very much. No problem.
Ladies and gentlemen, that is the one and only from the United Kingdom, Mr. Ronald. A lot of respect for him. He works seven days a week. 